special guest in studio live on the fan cam twitch and youtube is former cowboy set up from bobby belt Kayvon frazier and timed out well way better than bobby driving in from where <laughs> from salina yo, yo. oh <laughs> what time did you leave the house i mean honestly i left the house what time right at seven actually right at seven wow. yeah yep yep so straight yep. hour straight hour now yep. you Obviously, did not, time. you did not live out there when you were playing. No, I did. I did. I lived, well, well, not all the way in Salina, but in Prosper. Yep, yep, okay. Yep. So mm -hmm. then the drive to Frisco is... I mean, that's like 15 minutes. 15 yeah. minutes. I mean, not from Salina, but from Prosper. Salina is probably like 15 minutes more north. But you're getting property <laughs> value out there. Oh, yeah, 100%. You're getting, you're getting some 100%. land. 100%. You're getting some space. So I actually moved out there during COVID. You know, you know when uh, people were saying the housing market was crashing and stuff like that. That's when I made the leap of faith you know and moved to salina yeah and got a little bit more land in okay you know, yeah so what are you looking to get into these days you you ever you've been interested in media ever um we actually uh me and Derry are you familiar with Derry jackson, jackson. yeah yep, mm -hmm. yep so me and him actually have our own podcast that we actually do okay um so and then i own multiple businesses around here as well too, so, i mean we yeah yeah so it's a lot going on okay what are the businesses so my main so we own a business called a or b4i holdings which is a holdings company that uh owns like multiple healthcare uh athletic training facilities so okay. uh we see a lot of high level athletes yep, nice. yep, yep. now the lifelong mystery of whether you guys actually are paying attention right we've dealt with jason garrett forever and jason always appeared surprised, not paying attention to the media, not aware of the headlines. We don't mm -hmm. listen to what you guys are saying. What's the reality of it? Like, were you someone always watching Stephen A or Skip Bayless that was always tweeted to you? How much did you actually pay attention to what was being said about y'all when you were playing? I mean, not even going to lie. Like, athletes see it. Like, we definitely see mm -hmm. it. You know what I mean? It's, uh, you know, I remember, you know, I'm not going to call people out by names, but I remember certain Cowboy players, as soon as the game was over, they would go, you know, search their name on Twitter. Right. Mm -hmm. you know, you know so they seek like, it. It's not just told to them. They actually seek it oh, out. Oh, yeah, 100%. 100%. Um, as you get more mature in the league, you know, a little bit further in your career, you start to learn that that's the easiest way to have bad games is to to seek the the media, um, to to look and see what people are saying about you. But, I mean, right. for sure people see it, though. You is know? there someone that who on TV that you like really respected or someone you're just like, I'm ignoring what they're saying on both opposite ends of the spectrum? Um, to be honest, I don't even have an opinion of people on TV. I'm <laughs> not like a, you know, obviously I, I have my own podcast and things like that, but I'm, I'm not like a guy that, that, uh, is trying to shape myself around Stephen A. Smith or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Like it's, I'm not that deep into it. You know what I mean? Like I just do it for fun. I yeah. do it for a purpose. You know, the podcast is actually for a purpose. It's called Players Talk Business. Okay. Um, and I know we're talking, we, we, we'll touch on it in a minute, but the, just, just transitioning out of football is one of the hardest things that players go through or out of sport in general. You know, you know what I mean? It can be a football player, what type of basketball. Job, what type of job do you think the NFL did in giving you business training and, you know, <laughs> <laughs> they don't care. Or like set, <laughs> setting you up with someone to help you handle your money. I mean, <laughs> zip zero. They give you more media training and than business is, is training. That, is, that a, is that a team? Yeah, what, yeah, whatever yeah. they would give is that more a team or is that a league resources? Like, would teams give you resources or a league or would, are they? I mean, just I'm not even going to lie. Brian Wansley at the Cowboys, he mm -hmm. do a, he do a really really good job if players are interested in business. Yeah, to set them up and put them around people. You know. He still, till this day, I can still hit him up and he'll still connect me with different uh, people and stuff like that. Uh, and when I was with the Cowboys, it was their, their Brian Wisely, his name was Caleb. He did a really, really good job as well, too, setting you up with people, you know. But, you know, the teams don't, man. Come on. Like, yeah. why would they? You know what right, I mean? Right. Like, you, you ever, you're their employee. Why would they want to share you with anybody else? It, right. doesn't, it, it doesn't make sense business wise. Who was really, really <laughs> sharp business wise that you've been around in the league of, uh, as, as a from a player standpoint? We're like, this guy, I mean, he's on it. He's going to be crushing when he's done playing. Uh, we always I, talked about Jalen Smith around here. He had that entrepreneurial spirit, it seemed like. 
I didn't know there's someone in Miami or someone that impressed you. I mean, I wish I had an answer for you. I don't. I wish, I, like, I mean, I didn't have that player that I was looking up to uh, from a business perspective. I mean, I've heard great things about Larry Fitzgerald. You know, I've heard great, great things about him. I haven't had the pleasure of being around him. Yeah. Um, you ever pick Jerry's? Brand? Well, actually, no. I would say Travis Frederick was was pretty. You know, he was he was pretty impressive. Yeah, he was pretty impressive. Um, but I didn't have the privilege of being around him. You know, from a personal uh, level. You know, I was in a locker room with him, but I I didn't really see uh, everything that he was throwing into his business. So I mean, I I can't even. I wish I had an answer for you because, but I didn't have uh, somebody that I was looking up to from a business perspective or that was showing me the ropes. I didn't, I didn't, yeah, I didn't have that. Former Cowboy Kayvon Frazier in studio here on 105.3 The Fan. You know, when we talk about the, the, the noise from the media and guys who, who seek it out and stuff like that, like one of the, I feel like one of the lines that gets parroted a lot from NFL teams or NFL coaches is they'll talk about, you know, we're just blocking the noise out. We're blocking the noise out, blah, 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 things like that. Uh, specifically here in Dallas, and I would imagine other places, but spef- specifically here in Dallas, is it less about, sh- do you think teams should focus less on just block out the noise and more, hey, here are tools on how to equip like dealing with the noise? Because the noise is there and it's not reasonable necessarily to think that right. it's going to be blocked out. Should that be more of a focus from some of these teams is just teaching them, equipping them with like, here's how you put the noise into context mm-hmm. and how you respond to it? I mean, Dallas is one team in particular that is, is always going to have noise. I mean, that's that's how the whole brand is built, right? You yeah. know, around like the media noise and just stuff like that. You know, I, I used to think with, when they talk about it so much on ESPN, I used to think that they be getting paid, like, <laughs> that, that they get kickbacks to talk about. It. It's like, honestly, yeah. Like, I mean, because every day you turn it on, it's something about the Cowboys. So, yes, yes, I would. Like, instead of trying to ignore it, you're not going to ignore it. No player is going to ignore it. You know, how do you deal with it? How do you handle it? Is is that the reality? Like, I mean, when they tell us we're blocking out the noise, is that the messaging from the organization you guys, or do they recognize there? you guys are going to hear it and this is how you need to put it into proper context? I mean, context. They, they try to tell us to block it out, you know, but the 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 harsh reality is we're going to hear it, you know, like, like teach us how to handle it, you know, instead of uh, just telling us to block it out. Ain't nobody gonna block out the noise. Did you ever get the sense that they were listening or seeking it out? For sure. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. Right, they're human. I like, mean, come on. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah I but mean, Garrett, JG is it? Garrett I mean, was I great. Lo- I love Garrett. Like, like Garrett was honestly. People say a lot of negative things about him. He was one of my favorite coaches. You know, until this day, I still have a good relationship with him. Um, but I think we'll be a fool if if he wasn't. It, it, it would be a fool to think that he wasn't hearing what the media was saying about him. Does it seem like, and I think we all view the perception that the Cowboys as an organization want the chatter, want the noise. Well, whereas, Jerry does. Yeah. At least Jerry does. 100%. Whereas in the other other teams that you played for, did you did you get the same sense that they want them talking about them too? Or they're like, hey, we love being anonymous. I mean, everything that's built around the Cowboys is about noise. It's about distractions, right? When I was with the Raiders... You know, people would think, hey, hey, this is in Vegas and stuff like that. But when I was there, everything was completely the opposite. Like, you know, the practice facility wasn't like on the strip or, you know, around all these people. So when you're practicing, um, I was with Basaj. Basaj, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Because that was right after Gruden transitioned out um, with the stuff that he was dealing with. But uh, here with the Cowboys, you would think we was on the Vegas strip because you'll see all these tourists coming in and, checking out the practice facility yeah. while we're in practice and stuff like that. You practicing is people. Oh, I'm sorry. I almost spilled my coffee. Almost <laughs> <laughs> it's people up watching you from the Cowboys club. Like you would think that you on the Vegas strip, but in Vegas it's completely off of the strip It's nowhere by any fans or anything like that. Um, it's completely isolated from anybody else. Do you feel like it made a difference for the environment of winning that season it did for sure for sure we, we was like i mean that was so i don't know if y'all remember like we went on that i mean it was a lot of stuff that was going on i just came in after Basach. yeah um you know after Basach transitioned out well transitioned to head coach he brought me in and that's when uh we went like on a uh yeah huge winning streak and ended up making the playoffs and stuff like that now where are the cowboys now in your opinion in terms of contender status I mean, I, I, Maybe I think we should they, ask you who you're still tight with first. 
<laughs> yeah, so I mean, I'm cool with all of them. Like, yeah. you know, I'm 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 not going to come here and sugarcoat. I mean, I'm on y'all show, so yeah, I'm gonna okay. keep it a hundred. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like, I'm I'm gonna tell y'all exactly how I feel about the Cowboys. Still a Cowboys fan. They support me. I support them. They come to the gym. You know, all the Cowboy players come and get treated, come train with us and stuff like that. Like we see them all. So I mean, I'm not gonna talk negative about them okay. at all. But I'm 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 gonna be real. Um, I think that they have a lot of talent. I think that this is the best that our defense um, mm. has been in years, right? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. we couldn't ever, you know, sit here and say we have a defense like this. You know what I'm saying? And I think that that's, that's something to really, really speak about, you know? Um, and I think I think we have championship defense, for real. Like, I really, really think we do. I think that on the offense, they got to get it together to be able to uh, – to be able match to have it. a yeah to match it. I mean, I mean, and it's not it's not about like talent or anything like that. You know, people ask me about Dak a lot, and is he like like Dak has the talent? He you know I, I mean honest honestly his talent is up there with like his talent level is up there with like Brady's. I mean you can compare it like as far as arm strength. You know, it's very very similar tangibles. But um, him and McCarthy got to get on the same page to be able to play off the defense. You know, and and that's just my, that's my opinion. You know, that's one thing that Brady did very, very well is he had fired, excuse my language, but he had some really, really good defenses, right? You know, I, I was going to say something. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he had some really, really good, I forgot what was on We're radio. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But he had really, really good defenses. You know, Brady always had really, really good defenses. And he did a great job of understanding where the game is at and not making any risk while his defense is playing really, really good. When you take a step back and you're, you know, you're 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 looking at it from from afar now, mm-hmm. um, on social media and such, does it seem like the the fans that the that the players in the league hold Dak in a higher regard than the than the media and the fans do? It seems like it, it, my perception is that the players around the league love him. Yeah, I mean we yeah, 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 I mean the players love him. Everybody love I mean everybody loves Dak. Mm-hmm. I mean I think the fans do as well too. I just think that that the fans put a lot of pressure on him when I mean this it, like football is a team sport, you know, and we got to always remember that. We we have to as fans now, like I'm a fan now, we have to take a step back and remember that football is a team sport. Brady Brady yeah, he won all them championships, but he did that by sometimes he had to play off his defense. And that's where Dak and McCarthy, they got to, like, you can tell Dak and Kellen Moore wasn't on the same page. How so? Like, and when the defense, like, last year our defense was really, really, like, was it was the best defense that we had in years. Yeah. Um, That last game, there was no reason why we should have been taking as many risks and putting the ball in harm's way. Um, while San our Fran? defense is playing, yeah, w- w- while our defense is playing that good. Yeah. Our defense was holding down the game. You know, and that's one thing that Brady always did very well was man, when his deep. Yeah, he's managed the game. You know, that's that's all football but if I'm paying is. You for, if game. I'm paying you forty million dollars, I expect you not to be. We call it a bus driver. Mm-hmm. You got to be a difference maker, right? You gotta. You're supposed to score twenty four points against San Francisco. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe not not being a seventeen fourteen game. That's my problem with Dak. I feel like. Now I want to I want to put all my resources defensively to try to be like San Fran. I don't think Dak is going to. He's got flashes, no doubt. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't I don't think they're going to win the championship because of his right arm. How yeah, unfair yeah, is no, that? I might, no, I no, I think that's fair. I think that's fair to say. But know? he can play like an but MVP. Like, I just don't think it's going to be consistently there. I think that's fair to say, and he is getting paid a lot of money. I yeah. mean, that's 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 us being real. He is getting paid a lot of money, and but I think that's very fair to say. But you can say brilliant. We, 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 yeah, I'm, 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 I mean, it's brilliant, I think, Sean. Yeah, <laughs> but I think we have to stop putting all that pressure on them. Uh, I think the organization have to stop putting all that pressure on them. I think that that I think Kellen Moore was was really since he was getting paid that much. I don't know if it was coming from the top. You know, I don't know if it was coming from the head coach. But since he was getting paid that much, I think that we was trying to put everything on Dak back when we didn't have to. You think this could be an improvement with McCarthy as the offensive coordinator? I mean, I hope. Well, I hope too. But I mean, I think? hope. But we like, like it would be fools to think that he didn't have a, a hand in the play calling last year. Right. You know what I'm saying? I think it all just came down to who gonna take the fault for it, and he wasn't gonna take the fault for it. Yeah. You know. But I mean, I mean, you you think he's? Do we really think 
that he just took a step back and be like, hey, Kellen, you can call whatever you want. <laughs> Man, come on. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like, they go over the same game plan every single week before the game, and Kellen Moore had probably have to get it approved by the head coach. But you think Kellen maybe trusted Dak too much? Not trusted, right? You know, and, and don't – like, I don't want to twist up the words. I, I trust and – you know, putting everything on Dak back is completely different. You know what I mean? Like, like we have to trust Dak to manage the game. Don't trust him to to make some Patrick Mahomes plays. Like they, like he doesn't have those tangibles. Right. The Patrick Mahomes. You know, I know we're going to talk about Lamar Jackson, but he doesn't have those specific tangibles. So yeah. let's work what we got. Like, like, like Dak is a really, really good player. You know what I mean? Yeah. But let's not get him out of his box.